I V M. My favorite link is storytell.com slash IVM, which is a lovely place to go. Best books available. I'm not saying that because they're forcing me, but stop choking me. All right, I'll do it anyway. Yes, available on Storytel is a book called Becoming by Michelle Obama. It's a book that's changed my life. It's made me a complete woman. I used to be a very different person, but because of this book, you sort of believe in yourself, your gender and the ability to achieve anything. There are no limits. Thanks to Michelle and Becoming on Storytel. So keep in mind that if you go through Storytel.com slash IVM, you get a 30-day free trial as against a 14-day free trial on the link. All right, it's very simple. All you got to do is log on to Storytel.com slash IVM. Millions and millions and millions of stories, many written by me. All that and more. Find it all on Storytel. Kripaya Dhyan Dijiye, the language used on the podcast may not be fit for consumption. We warn you, Tread carefully. But listen, yaar. Don't be so conservative. You're listening to Cyrus Says. And now, the voice of the creator. Hi, this is the creator. I'm going to talk to a man called Daksh Tiyagi who's got a lovely book called A Nation of Idiots. Is it about India, Pakistan, Nepal, Burma? I don't know. We'll find out. Why follow your auntie's advice when you can follow Cyrus Says on Facebook and Twitter to stay updated about the latest shows? Okay, here on Cyrus Says with the Shiv Sena deadlock with the BGP going on at the moment. It may be solved a few minutes from now. But my point is, I was thinking this through. Why can't our political parties, when they form alliances, why can't they be a little more transparent and have a sort of video recording of what their uh, points are between them, what, what the correlation will be and what the alliance will be, what the give and take will be? Why can't it just be like a menu card so everybody knows what's going on? I'm voting for you because I know this is what's going to happen in the alliance. It's not fair to just have an alliance and not tell us what's going on. Because I think ultimately, if the Shiv Sena joins the NCP in the Congress and they form a government, and then suddenly you only supported uh, Shiv Sena because you wanted the BJP to be in power, you know, you're sitting on your backside. Doesn't make any sense to me. So here's it: be transparent, be accountable, be what we do on the podcast. Tell us the truth before. It's called Cyrus says. How many times have you caught yourself googling stuff on health and wondering if it's the right information? How many times have you heard different health experts give opposing views, which has only left you confused? There are rising cases of cancer, heart, diabetes, stress, and autoimmune diseases. Meet the patients and the experts who paved the path of true healing. Join me, Rachna Chachi, cancer nutrition coach and nutritional therapist on Heal and Hearty. I take you through my own journey of recovery from an incurable disease and the journey of so many others who healed only via. nutrition and holistic healing find the answers you seek for what's good for your health and what's good for your soul you can listen to us on the ivm podcast app or ivmpodcast.com don't forget your date with good health all right back here finally a talented man has appeared on our show his name is daksh tyagi he's 16 years old uh, wears a black t-shirt is an audio medium so no one's interested uh, first and foremost uh, my good friend daksh how do you pronounce your name Ducks. That's Ducks. it. Yeah, I've done it correctly. Yeah, these are hard names for me, man. I used to grow up with people with names like Bobby. You know, so much easier. Uh, Ducks. Uh, we're going to talk a lot of things, but we'll start at the top, which is the book. And the book has a cover of you. Well, the back side of the book, which is a terrible phrase, is a picture of you in London, uh, Venice. In Venice. Yeah. So you're not a struggling author. Ah, uh, well, uh, my savings went up in flames. So what the hell were you doing in Venice? Ah, uh, just wanted to travel a little bit. That's it. Okay, it's got nothing um, to do with the book. It has nothing to do with the book. Wow! It's just a photograph my wife makes, took. Oh, yeah. lovely! <laughs> it makes you look very affluent, and with the lovely stone structure at the back and the fancy thing you're wearing, and look, and you look happy. So this is pre-book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start at the top. A Nation of Idiots is the book that you brought out, and it says an Indian citizen's guide on how to avoid a nation of idiots. That's right. Yeah. So take us through it. Uh, basically, it's a book that explores with almost like a. Childlike curiosity of uh, the things that govern us, sort of like politics, religion, uh, customs, traditions, things we don't understand. Mm-hmm. Uh, parallel parking. Oh, uh, parallel how Meem Saab stops yeah. in the middle of the road to get out and stops the whole traffic. Oh, that's in there. Yeah, please keep that in there. Yeah. These are my yeah. issues. They're elite issues, but they have to be told. I love this line to my lawyer. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> when I was writing the book, <laughs> when I started writing the book, um, you know, I was researching about things that. Um, we're going against uh, the point of view of the majority and uh, that's always a dangerous thing to do especially in some of the chapters like politics and religion i bring out 
a few things that uh, Man, might get me in trouble. I like it already. I got to tell you, I haven't read the book yet, but I just like the attitude because in the times we're living in, it's a little bit cocky. You begin with a caution. I'm going to read that out. If you don't know how to look for idiots, it says caution. If you don't know how to look for idiots, they are hard to spot, but idiots are everywhere. Across the table, in the next compartment, on the next seat, at railway stations, airports, restaurants, and shopping malls. They stand among your friends. They drink your beer and laugh at your jokes. They might even be part of your family and you never know. Look closer and you just might find one inside your home. An idiot might be in your bedroom, asked my wife, even if you were alone. Imagine that. Yeah, very interesting. A lot of cynicism, though. Yeah, I mean, uh, to get a point across, sometimes you have to first rubbish it all and then build it up from scratch. I think that was the idea to start with uh, almost taking offense away and then you read it from a fresh point of view. All right. So give us a little bit of the background. Why did you choose to get into this sort of style? Uh, actually, is that really, is that your voice? Uh, yeah, so it took a long time. Um, it's been now 10 years I've been um, a writer for hire or working on websites and things Talk like that. Talk about being an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I chose the right profession. Fair yeah. enough. Oh. And uh, I am actually one of the idiots in the book as well. Uh, you know, from a, uh, from an early age, I was questioning stuff, but um, I wasn't really sure whether um, this was a book or a docu-series or something like that. Uh, I just wanted a citizen's point of view on how we deal with problems rather than just the problems themselves. It was not until the demonetization crisis that I knew I had a book because for a nation of idiots to erupt, you need a situation and what's better than a billion people having to exchange their notes and stand against in line the will, yeah. suddenly and figure out that they don't have any money, but they have money. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, yeah. Beautiful moment in India's history, no doubt. And it's made a lot of sense because now everybody's got cash again. Yeah, I think we, we, we pointless just Pointless exercise, absolutely yeah, pointless. Yeah. yeah, It was like a drill. Yeah, it really. was a drill. Well, I think it was, uh, many politicians in India have done this over the ages. They just want to appear to do things. It's very important to appear to do things also. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what the end result is. Yeah, I think the political correctness, um, oh. that plays into it. Don't get me I, started. You'll start writing I the second book. I hate that term. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but I, uh, your very first line in the introduction, it starts with, on 11 September 2001, which is, you know, I was in the 9th standard physics class. So uh, you start with uh, the Twin Towers. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I just wanted to compare uh, the feeling of getting that news because uh, we were in a boarding school. So Where? Uh, in Dehradun, in uh, Wellam Boys. Wellam Boys? You're a rich yeah. bitch. Not Oops. really. I mean, they would have been I proper. was the poorest guy there. <laughs> yeah, I've been. I've been to Wellam Boys, Wellam Girls, Dune. We shot it for MTV. Uh, uh, it was fabulous. Yeah, yeah, I heard you were there, yeah. uh, but we were not allowed out of our dorms. Are you better. serious? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. So this, this but it was, was an exposure to me because it's really like five-star sort of uh, facilities coming from, you know, Mumbai with our broken colleges and one garage. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, huge I mean, space, cricket ground, rugby ground, football ground, this, that. You know, I mean, it was fabulous. It was, it was like, what, 35, 40 acres or something Super like that. Yeah. For us, it was just unbelievable. You really look like rich sahibs who send their kids there. Yeah, and Which was the thing for, for a while. I, I know it's not there anymore. But when it started, it was kind of like um, it was only for the uh, for the rich hmm. and when I got there um, I felt really poor because uh, it had all changed by then it's it's just a school now but uh, yeah it started off that way but anyway I was in uh, I was in my boarding school class when I heard about 9-11 I mean that's how cut off from the world I was that I witnessed 9-11 by word of mouth literally my god and <laughs> Uh, Compared to where we are today in 2019 Where every little thing A dog shits and you have it on digital Yeah and thankfully I'm not on social media You're not that on much. social media no. You're an author with a voice Yeah I, but I prefer to live off the grid a little bit Yeah, oh. Even on this book you, I, without, I, a, without having a drugs problem You're not on social media No, Amazing what a story yeah. No but <laughs> But also, I didn't want my name on the book, actually. Earlier, I wanted a pen name. What? And then my mother said, Isle bada kiya tujhe. So then, <laughs> that was the end of it. Uh, that was the end of the discussion. And I was like, yeah. all right, yeah. I'll have my name on the book. That's huh. fine. Uh, but uh, anyway, so I was comparing the feeling of getting that news to getting the news of demonetization. Because depends on wow. whom it struck. Hey, thank God you're not on social media, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Huh. As I said, uh, it's it's an honest, uh, um, it's so an honest recounting of whatever. Yeah, yeah it's what an saying. honest recounting of what I felt at the time. Hmm. It ha doesn't have to do with how big. So did an you pen notes was. down all your since two thousand and one? Are you penning notes down or are you just recalling? Uh, I have been making notes not since two thousand and one, but for the last uh, four or five years because I came up with the idea long before I sat down to actually write it. Uh, 
and it took time uh, it took time to understand what i really wanted to say because there's this annoying feeling that you have when you follow blindly you are questioning but you're not sure because the way of the majority seems the right way but you would like to question certain things you just have to be sure what you want to question so were you always rebellious in a, in a more subtle way I'm, i'm sure but were you always rebellious yeah with small things yeah i do so are you one of those guys who just gets irritated when people tell you what to do or you know with a conventional way of doing things Yeah I do. Oh boy. Uh, even even so with the book and understand demonetization will really irritate you. Oh. <laughs> you know it's one of those things I mean I'm not interested in policy that much but in terms of behavior I just felt like demonetization was a point in Indian history where we could have as a country shown what human kind is capable of and we went the other way. So I I What do you mean by uh there was a chaos created so post demonetization we could have behaved in a certain way no during demonetization right. there was a chaos created there was there was and there was fear yeah huge and, fear and the chaos enabled the corrupt to get away and uh, there was, was a reason why bags of cash were burnt in a noida colony there was a there was a reason why people went and bought uh, lamps and rugs they didn't need but rather they could have just walked down the street and given that 500 bucks to a homeless person they're not using oh, that, that way okay so, so we nobody we, thought about other people other people because i, I get because the situation <laughs> <laughs> i i get the situation but at the same time i think uh, that's what my book talks about that we just followed into the hands of the people that wanted the chaos to reign and uh, um, in fact here's but a, what purpose did it serve the government or anyway i mean if you were to look at it from their point of view what, what were they trying to do I I try not to, to guess huh. uh what our government is doing but uh, I think it had to do with um, um because if you're trying to take money away from the corrupt people as you say or mm. the connected people as you say mm. that doesn't really happen they can to be influential and they can to figure out ways we are very very smart people it's, not it's only the middle class normal man who's going to now have to stand in line take out money from wherever and you know go through all these processes yeah. prove himself yeah. pre aadhar card yeah. it was around the corner so what was the point of it could be data collection i'm not sure ah oh, that i that's true that was that was one of the th- rumors during the rounds yeah yeah uh, what about your cash what did you do with all your cash well you have to have money to have white and black fair enough yeah <laughs> in fact when demonetization happened i was stuck uh, midway between sydney and melbourne and my third See, hand now, now car you know you sounded great before that when you tell me on between sydney and melbourne you sound rich again oh, just because of the location I, i was overseas but overseas you still have beggars overseas <laughs> really yeah you do Uh, they they're not begging from the subcontinent uh <laughs> oh you mean people don't I mean, work they call them bums homeless and all that no but they're more like hand to mouth you you are working but it's odd it's jobs tough. uh it's tough it's like it's being a easy. dj or a comic or something yeah, it's really it's hard. only yeah. when you come back people are like oh foreign returner like in udhar huh. it, it's as hard so anywhere. what the hell were you doing now that you set it up oh um we were driving back from uh, my cousin's wedding and our car broke down and uh, it was like anyways it was dying the car hmm. and then it broke down and then i got home somehow and i heard about the demonetization news and i told my wife that uh, look i'm flying to india because i think this is my first chapter and she said you're crazy because we didn't have money where was your family the rest of your family all at the wedding or somebody oh uh, no no they were all in india i just gone for a Friends cousin's okay. uh, court marriage yeah. so delhi bombay where's the family uh in muzaffarnagar uh i was born in muzaffarnagar okay awkward moment you're going on <laughs> oh Do you know where Muzaffar? I do know where. <laughs> okay. Thank, thanks to all the nefarious things that have happened. <laughs> yeah. But since the riots, we've become famous. I know. I yeah. didn't want to bring that up. But you know, this, <laughs> our country, unfortunately, is labeled by these kind of yeah. things. You remember this place because of that, that place because of that. Nobody remembers a, a place because some good saintly person helped poor people uh, get on their way, yeah, which true. is you. Oh, point in the future. So you came back to Muzaffar Nagar. You came back home basically. And what did you see with your own eyes? Uh, I think I saw a lot of. information that was not communicated in the right way i'd put it like that uh, there were uh, too many experts on the news screen uh, they were just uh, talking about rumors and about and this, allegations and you notice how the news anchors get excited with the the more suffering and misery there is so almost like there's an excitement level which correlates to that you know somebody should do this exercise uh, news readers take everything out of context if you were to take what a news reader says out of context it's some of the most terrible things a human being can say I don't know why they get so worked up yeah. over things like this. It's not a cricket match and India's winning the last over, you know, the, yeah. the kind of temperature that you're getting from them. Oh, actually that's a perfect analogy. Yeah. They're like uh, final, they overs final overs. Final yeah. over, you know, Shabash, come on, come yeah. on India, what? 
you know, and, the, and the panic If there's a panic situation They make the panic more yeah, yeah. Even with weather conditions When you see fog This and the other They just want it to be Even worse than it is Delhi yeah. has no chance All the Sarmas <laughs> are dead The Kapoors will go next The Khannas are dying Forget it It's not You know try and look at the positives There's no positive It's yeah. always negative Yeah because uh, I, I don't think In fact And we get, uh, that's we why, get viewership Because of that So hence they do yeah, it I, That's I why they do that. it yeah. yeah And that's why I, You know in, in 2006 I think Or 7 When your show came out The, uh, the week that was Yeah 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 I used to love that show because now a lot of people are doing uh, news comedy, but right. uh, I kind of like that take Genre. on things. Yeah. Um, you're making people laugh, but at the same time, you're just informing them that little bit more. Um, I think we need more of that. Yeah, yeah we have uh, a couple of our news anchors are doing that. They're, now their shows are parodies, actually. Right, in okay. actuality, so there's you know they've already done it in okay. a sense because uh, you know at the end of the day I don't know if you watch Hindi news at all. Hindi news sometimes is hilarious. They oh. take the most ridiculous stories. You know, like a, a Baba has a rebirth, he dies, and then the Baba's uh, come back in a Pomeranian soul, and then you know I mean and with the Bari voice, the Bari voice yeah, yeah. and the background music and everything. Oh, like, soundtrack like God is are, speaking, yeah. you know. Yeah. Oh. There should be original soundtrack award but for adult educated people are listening. That's what I can't understand, and they're not listening yeah. from point of view like this is Tamasha, let's enjoy it. They actually listen. And they actually think it's knowledge. That's what I'm worried then about. Then they argue, you know, armed with that knowledge. So, yeah. So this is a bit scary. Okay, let's, let's get get back to the book. Actually, now. sorry, just one more thing. Please. Uh, the news machine is actually one of the chapters in the book. Okay, let's. Go and uh, that's where I go into detail about uh, the way we experienced news and the steps we took, like you know, taking that as knowledge and then you sort of react to it. That's what they want in, in the no, end. They you know. create panic, literally create panic. And I think mm. from what I gather, whenever we're in the newsroom, they really enjoy weather tragedies. In yeah. a sense, I hate using this word, but you can see everybody's excited. Oh, I, mean, I actually heard Delhi office uh, telling Bombay office, Kidney log mar gaye hai And then suppose the number is nine. Sirf no! You know, it's like oh that. Oh my God. It's just, this kind of language is just scary. <laughs> it's almost like disappointment, you see, because from their clinical yeah. point of view, we need 80 to die so that our news thing goes up. <laughs> and this is the irony in the real satire, but unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately it's here to stay. Because there, there's no other way to do news now. Nobody is just normal. And I always thought that if you're an anchor, you should just be sort of neutral, right? You yeah, because... People talking, you should not have a view. You let's, should be... Sorry, you should yeah. be... Can you say something, sir? Can you say something? Yeah, That's yeah. all you have to say. Yeah, and let's take normal life, for instance. When you're giving bad news to someone, you give it with a straight face. Yeah. And when you're giving good news, that's when you get excited. Uh, yeah. They're, they're just going the other way. Yeah. But good news would be really good news. which benefits the country or something, humanitarian effort or whatever. Yeah. Well, good news can't be just some ridiculous news like, we have caught Pakistan red-handed. <laughs> What? What? Yeah, that's not and even those news. white papers are thrown all over which no one can see. Yeah, oh yeah. What that, are they reading from? Under, that proof which no one sees but, <laughs> but the hand. Okay, yeah. everybody knows what we're talking about. We'll we'll move a little bit from there. So let's just go over some of the chapters. Uh, what is the making of an ideal Indian man? What's that about? Uh, it's uh, we desire some qualities in an ideal Indian man. Um, one of them is, of course. You have to hate Pakistan. Oh. Uh, that's the big one. Oh boy! And then the other one is you've always got to be first. We are, you know, unbuckling seat belts at seven hundred kilometers oh, yeah. an hour. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, you know things like Why that. Why do we do that? I, Every I don't know. time it's us. The moment they say we're about to land, tuck 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 tuck, phones out. It's I think, only Indians. The Jap guy is fine. Yeah. German guy is fine. <laughs> Indian guy, it's all out. And have you ever seen one of us being on the window seat with some other nationality? We just want to get out yeah, and yeah. we force them into the yeah. line and then they end up standing for a while there. Yeah. I feel in our DNA there's some sort of fear of being, you know, claustrophobic sort of fear of being too many people in a small, which is a small land in sense of how but many people there then are. Then that doesn't make sense because we want to rush in as well. Into That's the true. Flight. That's yeah. true. Why do I, we I think we just oh, don't want to be very behind. Classical yeah. conditioning. We want to suffer. You know, yeah. When you've been in prison, <laughs> then you can't. Uh, after 20 years in prison, men yeah. aren't comfortable outside prison because of classical conditioning of being in a prison. Yeah. So that sort of thing. Right. I think though we want to we want to rush in because we want the hand luggage to be act over our actual heads. That's the thing because yeah. I, I think that's why we rush into a plane. Uh, I still but, haven't gotten. But not to mention hand luggage. I've seen so many times where people just take it out, let it bounce on the person below. Yeah. I mean it's just like normal Perth wicket. A lot of bounces. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Boing, carry on. Yeah, and uh, even the person who's hurt is just this is normal. Yeah. Foreigners are just astounded. The, the the funny thing about us is our manners are just don't equal the rest of the world's. Uh, I yeah. understanding of manners or yeah. what is sort of right in society like yeah. opening doors for ladies uh, not not pushing kids out of the way when you jump through a gate <laughs> I mean I, I've, I'm astounded sometimes you know, my old mother's walking and the four guys will just walk past her and push her past uh, yeah. to get to the gate I'm like you know nowhere 
No, in poor society, mm-hmm. anywhere in the world, they will mm-hmm. still not do that. Yeah, I mean, no other nationality responds to like a single man responds to the call boarding for families yeah. with children. <laughs> yeah, you're just there. Yeah. <laughs> that really, that's absolutely spot on. Boarding for family with children means the thirty-one-year-old yeah. single guy has to rush yeah. and kick everybody. Yeah. Especially if you're on the Bangkok airport, it's with two, uh, you know, yeah. bags of alcohol. Yeah. 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 And you're pretending it's only one bag. Because <laughs> you put two toys on yeah. the, the second bag. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, let's go to the next one. State of women, the unfortunate and deplorable. Yep. Um, nothing can be more true than that. And this I have written from the point of view of the Indian man not able to understand their experiences. Hmm. So I thought about how to approach the chapter and... I didn't want to sound uh, fake or disingenuous. I wanted to really tackle it as if how an Indian man sees uh, the problems that they are going through. And I came to the conclusion... Can you give us an example? Yeah, sure. Um, We think of um, sex-selective abortions Mm -hmm. as just uh, uh, one section of the society is doing it when that's not at all true. And it's mainly our conditioning where we think of the reasons why they might be doing it. And the small steps that we take towards that, um, and uh, we look away from those problems and we look at other things as well. That's the main thing. Are you talking about gender preference? Gender preference and how we choose to deal with the issue. If we think it's a problem for the poor, then we are ignoring the people who are taking flights overseas and getting abortions done just based on gender. Uh, And uh, then the poor face... uh, So what are you saying is going to do with how much money you have? It has to do with a mindset. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that what you're saying also is that uh, if this continues, there'll be more men and less women in this country. That's the last thing we need. Yeah, I think that that's already started to happen in some already parts some of the... 50-odd percent uh, uh, yeah. in favor of male. Even a 2-3% difference is a huge thing, right? In a society. Yeah, it's a huge thing. And just uh, that, that difference, if we, it we, just tilts a little bit, yeah, that makes a huge we difference. We need more transgenders. I feel if you have a more fluid gender, everybody will be happy. Or you can flip out from left to right. You know, you can go, for, I'm a man today, Tuesday, I'm a woman, Wednesday, I'm back, man, Thursday, I'm nothing. I just feel it will be more empathetic and sensitive to everybody also. Yeah, and the In census fact, people won't know what to do with that. Who cares about them? <laughs> I say we declare ourselves neutral gender from today. What do you say? Done. Mr. Tyagi, are you with me? Yes. In the words of Arnab Goswami, uh, the people need to know that we are now transgender. <laughs> Which, but no disrespect uh, to transgender, by the way. Before we yeah. get hammered by everybody wants That's to the disclaimer. You. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, it's like the guy who talks about black kids and uh, whatever, and then says, you know, but I have a black friend. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, we have to take a quick break, then we'll come back, lots more to talk about as to how you got here, the journey of an author whose first book is Nation of Idiots. Yeah. And just to be clear, this is our nation? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, we take a break, we'll come back. The modern world is obsessed with food and agriculture. Everywhere you look, new and exciting technologies are bringing food innovation to your street market, your grocery store, your doorstep, and your plate. From our quest for the perfect food photos to our rediscovery of ancient grains, quite simply, food has never been sexier. But guess what? The modern food system is broken. It's a major cause of climate change, antibiotic resistance, and global poverty. So how did we get here? And where are we going? Most importantly, how are we going to feed 10 billion people globally? by the year 2050 through better, more sustainable means. I'm Varun Deshpande. And I'm Ramya Ramurthy. And we work for the Good Food Institute, a global non-profit accelerating the transformation to a more healthy, sustainable and just food system. The next food revolution is here. On Feeding 10 Billion, we're giving you the inside view. You can tune into us every Tuesday on the IVM Podcast app or ivmpodcast.com or wherever you get your podcasts from. All right, back here with Daksh uh, Tyagi, and he's written A Nation of Idiots for Parsis. DNT together is very hard, huh? very hard. Daksh oh, and Tyagi. I, I married a Gujarati, and before that, when they named me Daksh, okay, by the way, that was my third name that they gave me by the age of 10. What, so, was, what was the first one, Donald? Uh, the first one was, I think, it, it was uh, Batu or something like that. I love Batu. Yeah, it was... I oh, that's went to school with, of the earth. I went to school with that name. In Dehradun, it sounds right also. Uh, no, by the time I had to go to Dehradun, my parents knew they couldn't leave me in a room full of kids with yeah. that name. Because so. they all have Vikram Jeet and yeah. nice name, you'll be like, Batu! Yeah. So they named me Rishabh then, and then... 
Uh, but that's a nice name. It. Yeah, that that's a nice name. But yeah. then they changed it. To Are you Duff. serious? Yeah, you you had your it's name in the changed book. three yeah. times and almost at ten. Yeah, it's, is there any more to come? Th- th- there was one when I was born, uh, which was what? Uh, that is just please. for me. I'll no, take it to no, my please. grave. Don't no, take it, no. please. No, no, come on, can't do the podcast. My wife please. doesn't know it, and she would be listening later. Yeah. But why does she have to know it? It's just you and me now. Yeah, she'll I'll, never hear this. All right. So the pandit named oh. me Paramhans. And oh, if would I, have, you would have fit in, you would if, have fit in. <laughs> if I could walk out, I would have. But I was just <laughs> born. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he did. He yeah. couldn't believe what he'd done. Uh, then you yeah. became Batu. Yeah, and then I became Rishab, and then I became Dash. So four name changes. Yeah. And, and lovingly during intercourse, what are you called? Oh well, to, again to my grave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, as long as it's not Susan. All right. Well, Let, you, let's get back to before we look at a couple of other chapters. So uh, let's understand. You went. What's your background exactly? What did you study? Uh, creative writing and film and oh, television. Okay. Yeah. Where? Uh, in Melbourne. It, oh, you're an Aussie, mate. Was your Aussie accent? No, Kai, I won't change on. my accent. No, come on! I can't even imitate them. That's the nobody thing. can. Yeah. Well, you're you doing a tried? pretty good job. Yeah. I just pick up a little cricket commentary and do about three words, and then it, it switches. <laughs> my good friend Kunal Vijaykar has now mastered the English, Australian, Tamilian, Bengali accent. What? I don't know. That's what it sounds like. It's a unique accent. It's like Shoaib Akhtar's English accent. You know, no one can. Oh. you know. What does going he on? say? Wild, yeah. Yeah. Put, yeah. Put you don't know whether to watch his lips or hear the sound. Oh, he's yeah. great fun. Yeah. So he went to Scotland at the age of six. Without speaking a word of English, a boy from Rawal Pindi, Pindi right, as they call right. it in Pakistan. Mm. So Punjabi boy goes to uh, Scotland, picks up mm. Scottish burr, then comes back to Pindi and then speaks Punjabi version of Scottish burr. So it's just so no one in the wow. Pakistani team could understand him. It was like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah, I know, but he's a, he's good fun. Talk yeah. about getting an accent. Yeah, yeah. He would have been good. Uh, maybe he could be the next prime minister. Maybe that will help India-Pakistan relations. Yeah, at least we won't understand what he's saying. He yeah. won't understand what he's saying. And he's a secular guy. I can tell you that. I've drunk with him. Uh, let's get <laughs> let's get back. That says a lot. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> You're always safe with people who drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if you can put in a word for India, that'll be good. Yeah, yeah but we couldn't understand each other beyond a point. <laughs> then we just looked at the ladies. Was it the drinks or just the accent? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> wow, Mr. Boucha. <laughs> What's up? Okay, um, so Belvan, you studied creative writing. Yeah. And then... Then I started sort of doing odd jobs. Uh, there uh, in Australia? Yeah, because I, <laughs> I uh, graduated during the great financial crisis. So Your life that is just one sad brilliant. story after another. Yeah, First they called you Param Hans. Yeah, and I, want, and I want people Bishop? to laugh on it. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. so the Great Depression had hit Australia? Yeah, so there were no film jobs uh, back then. So I started doing odd jobs, uh, writing for uh, either websites or uh, working at a newsstand, sometimes at... Uh, for places that do billing at I don't know in after midnight yeah uh, it was like graveyard shifts uh, then slowly I got into the film line and uh, started writing Back home, what people. did your parents want you to do uh, they wanted me to write okay uh, my father's a doctor uh, that conversation went well yeah but well, he changed your name four times so you're confused yeah so I said Dutch but wants to do it. that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Risha would have done something exactly else, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so I mean uh, yeah, I just uh, started to write. It takes time to find your voice. And I was patient about that. More importantly, how to pay bills, right? You're fresh out of college. You've got a degree yeah. uh, in an international sort of thing. In the Indian you've got to story. pay back your education exactly. loan as so well. The Indian story abroad is always that they do the degree which gets them straight into a job. Yeah. And then pay back the loan and either stay there or come back a hero. Yeah, to marry a girl of the father's choice, uh, but still a hero. Yeah, uh, but that's when you go to the true. art section and humanities and writing and things like that, it's it's not quite the you same. You know, you're not finding bride studies. <laughs> no, <laughs> how do they explain in the cocktail circuit? You know, yeah, that's uh, right. uh, uh, we called him Rishab, but uh, uh, it didn't change. Yeah, and we were new stand pe kam kare. Ah, midnight ke baad <laughs> special shift. Yeah. Special shift. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, it just took time to get this book together. I'd been writing a few other things. I was writing actually for a producer in Sydney who was making a crossover film for India, and then I think his first film didn't do that well, so that project got shelved pretty Indian quick. Indian guy? Ah, uh, yeah, Indian guy. So the, those that would pay your bills, those kind of things. Those kind of things, yeah. Okay. So you would get partial payments. Yeah. yeah. What is partial payment? Oh, it doesn't release yeah, advance and thing. yeah, things like that. Well, Indian <laughs> Indian producer, right? You Ten percent pay- advance pe uh-huh. 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 yeah. kuch nahi. <laughs> well yeah. done, beta. I'll spread the name. Um, and then the book came about. But yeah. You, the- but you came back to India, obviously. Uh, Where did you find the wife in all this? Oh, she's actually from Mumbai. Uh, she studied in Melbourne as well. That's where we met. Oh, so romance is uh, two desis being disregarded in Australia and then you yeah, found love. Yeah, well, she she 
uh, did her education from a really prestigious university and she she was the one who would get, come back uh, from Melbourne University uh, she would come back and get the groom and all correct, those things correct. yeah but i was so there what did her parents say uh, he's a writer they were actually really supportive i don't yeah. know what happened behind the closed doors but they were really supportive yeah, huh. yeah. to my face yeah so what does your wife do if you don't mind uh, she used to work for university of sydney as a marketing officer now she's left that yeah and she's starting out on her own yeah back here uh, no in sydney so once again where do you live now i live in sydney right now so you settled down in sydney not really i think we are moving back next year where to uh, muzaffarnagar no to mumbai okay. probably all right, all right. you need one more you're up fine. guy yeah <laughs> you off exactly <laughs> yeah we need one more up guy oh, you never know <laughs> the, the way things are going that one up guy can tilt the vote oh yeah hopefully can form a government they may form it by the time you come back you never know yeah what's going on there see I, that's why i said that in the little rant of mine i can't understand why they can't be transparent about alliances yeah, how can yeah. you change your mind later about things and how can we voted not... for you as a package right exactly yeah so then uh, explain the package to me Yeah, and why can't you inform the voter before they went to vote what your exact plan is? Because it's very Machiavellian if one alliance partner pulls out and finds the opposition says we'll form something. It means nobody's got a spine. You yeah, know? that's because so you've got these different factions with opposing yeah. views and thoughts and philosophies, and suddenly it doesn't matter. So who are you kidding? Yeah, end of the day. And in all this, I don't know what. Congress is doing. I think they're just. They, Congress is on life support. We. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, literally coming last in the in the race amongst the horses here, and obviously have no voice. But yeah. but ironically, if someone was to if say the Shiv Sena was supposed to go that way, yeah, then suddenly true. they they'll be the you know sort of the kingmaker. So are they hoping that? this would happen do they really want to be in government look i think it's very simple the shiv sena wanted a two and a half year sharing business right mm. which the bjp since they are the big gun and all that and big gun at the center thing narendra modi and amit shah do not believe in that anyway yeah. you know, we are the big gun you yeah, can be our supporter or that's it so being the alpha dog in the race and all that they continue with that approach but yeah. i just want to know what did they decide before because we got all this press uh, coverage saying that the shiv sena was promised deputy cm before before yeah, the elections yeah. uh, promised uh, uh, twin sharing yeah yeah, yeah. whatever True. they could have done three and a half one and a half you know whatever <laughs> that's got to be a yeah. match that as indians we can mm. accept but uh, why not have a government and by the 14th 15th if they don't uh, have a uh, if they haven't formed the government then it becomes governor's rule which yeah, is quite true. embarrassing because yeah. you sort of won properly yeah, and you went through square. the whole exercise of yeah, this democratic what. process and now it's an ego thing like oh we can't share we can't share we yeah. don't share we are the big guys and whatever i just childish after some time yeah even with the voters i think we've been made to take stands before we've really made up our mind um i almost feel like that like people who voted i went to the i was standing in line in malba hill there was nobody in front of me that was the best part but i stood st- uh, in line anyway and I, i i went to everybody on that list everybody there were 12 names and i got to tell you it's really funny the kind of party symbols and all that are out there you know so i think people take it all seriously they go and do this they lose their deposits yeah. in some cases yeah. and after all that you don't have a government yeah, which is true. ridiculous yeah and it's a pretty powerful central government with the mm. same party in power so why can't they have sorted this out yeah they, oh, it's just a sorry exhibition yeah yeah democracy at its worst it's going to get even worse yeah. i think it's going to become more factionized and more regional parties will play roles in uh, different regions and states i don't know what's going to happen but you're in australia you have the australian version of a green card oh um, you no not really but i i Where do you pay your taxes uh australia and india yeah both oh, sweet Yeah, what a lovely humanitarian! No wonder he hates the country. Nation of idiots, paying tax everywhere he goes. Stop it! Stop it! Singapore change flights, pay tax. It's, it's not that much tax, to be honest. Yeah. All right, not yet. Who knows when you become super successful? They'll come after you. All right. Well, did Did you get any opposition to this writing this book? Uh, How have you published it? Uh, so basically, I I wanted to publish it the way it was. I approached like I got an agent, which for a first time writer is a big thing anyway. Uh, when I but they wanted me to alter the title slightly and they wanted to change a few things within the book and i didn't want to do that and so i went through my 20s just thinking about starting an arts company at some time and so you could publish yourself <laughs> not really so that i could publish art that was uh, more like almost art as an argument uh, about society Uh, so these two really. Can you tell them the together. whole point of your book is that you don't want to, you won't be unbridled and allowed to speak your mind and exactly I mean, the irony yeah. there. Yeah, for the publisher, you know, read my book. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So don't harness me and you know <laughs> put me in cuffs. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I mean, the title "A Nation of Idiots" they just said it's too negative. But so. it's tongue in cheek from start to finish. So how do? Why would they not get that? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm. What just, was the What was the other title option? I I have no clue because I never asked. What did they say? Take out idiots, a nation off. I just oh, said. Great. I just <laughs> said take this or lose it, and they yeah. lost it. So, <laughs> it was right. pretty quick. Yeah. So you were like Stallone. 
I mean, Rocky won. Stallone was a no. Oh, well, he was a pornographic actor. But the point of the matter is, he went from producer to producer, studio to studio, and uh, they liked the script. Everybody said, "You can't yeah. play it. You're nobody. Yeah. You can't play this role. We'll, we, yeah. we need an A-grade actor to play this role." And he refused to compromise. Yeah. Let's see where he's come. Yeah, I know. He's gone back to pornography <laughs> <laughs> after sixty years of Rocky and Rambo. Yeah. yeah. So you held out. Yeah. All said and done, under all that humor, uh, you're a strong man. You held out and you published it the way you want to. Yeah. No. Because otherwise, there's no point of the book. Because if I'm no saying point. that you got to speak your mind, and then I don't. Uh, exactly. I mean, sense. I mean, the whole idea of the book is tongue in cheek and uh, sort of cocking a snook at the government and more. All yeah. establishment figures, I presume. We can't go through everything. We don't have enough time. But um, what are the responses? Uh, the early response has been really nice. People have gone from almost being confronted by the title in some cases. Plus, to, you haven't been arrested. Um, thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but uh, it's uh, see, I didn't make a big deal of what is in the book. I wanted to promote the thought, not the. A lot of it is uh, also a cultural uh, sort of specifics or social specifics, not necessarily political. Not at all. There's just point, one chapter on politics and religion. But apart from that, you it's all religion. Got, Yes, I you have. You dare touch religion? Well, you read it and tell me what you think of it. Can you quickly give us an insight? What, what would you say? Uh, about politics and religion? No, religion. Or politics, just I've, I've understood demonization. I think uh, religion needs to move with time a little bit. You can't have... Okay, this might sound dumb, but you can't have religion that takes itself too seriously. Oh, you're preaching to the <laughs> choir. Don't worry about me, huh? Yeah, so uh, basically what I've been... What I talk about there is uh, how we approach religion. And how too we emotional. Tied, yeah, too emotional. And, and, and then we tied to politics. And which you is can't, not and it's emotional. also dated in a sense, nah? because the world moves forward and then you can't have the same rules and regulations sort of in yeah. some cases. And we put our kids through regulations of religion, even yeah. though the government's putting them to... It's almost like contrary, what China contrary. is doing with yeah. the governments. We don't actually put any regulations on our kids, but... Oh no, you know, our religious heads yeah. do. You yeah. can't eat meat today, it's Tuesday, it's like that. Yeah, yeah. Th- that's it, that's it. Yeah. And that, how, how do your parents about all this? That you've been a cynical sort of guy, that you're a bit of a crusader, that you, you know, you. My dad actually always uh, told me to question why. Okay, so they're yeah. all from the same side. It's not like you're just black sheep of the family who, no, no, who no, breaks not all at the all. rules. No, no, no. And all. that, you know, your parents are RSS members who are like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> Where did this happen? We send him to Australia and this is what happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wish that would make a good story though. Yeah. It would be great, yeah. yeah. But it, that also happens. Sometimes when you have the extreme, uh, people rebel against mm. that. But it looks like you come up in a society which is liberal. Actually, Samen Muzaffar Nagar and very uh, evolved. Very, I feel we are very evolved, but maybe we're wrong. Oh, we, yeah, we are wrong, but yeah. we are evolved. Yeah. <laughs> we're just Jews <laughs> in, in a nation of idiots. We're the worst of the lot. Okay, but I think it's very, uh, in a way, it's a, it's an aggressive sort of book, and it needs to be told. And I think our country, I, I think you spot on when you say that it, we take ourselves too seriously. Not just religious, but everything. Yeah, everything. Everything. Yeah. You know, why do you have these posters of people's birthdays of members of parliament? Oh, you, why are they there? What have they got to do with? Yeah. Anything. I hate that. I can't I, bear that. You know, it's why not, do you need to put up a billboard for that? I yeah. understand Ranveer Singh is doing a film, so the bloody thing is up, and he's yeah. you know, so that we go and watch his film. There's a process yeah. there, but birthday of this guy who I'll mm. never meet or see or remember yeah. in some corner of central Mumbai yeah. where 30 people voted for him. I mean, come <laughs> on, and yeah. then there's one with 400 faces of all of them. You know, all the people are wishing him. They, their own faces are there. So get yeah, this. Yeah. Happy birthday, fat face in the middle. And then happy birthday, <laughs> wishes all around. Why am I, as a citizen of India, going to look at this? What have I got yeah. to do with this happy birthday and the 400 with chumchas and That's chelas? True. How's that promotion? Yeah, and and you know, Indian males in straight photographs just don't work. Oh, it does it's not. Just, no, yeah. It's just no, no program should ever carry that. <laughs> Oof. All right, uh, Daksh, I've just been told we've talked too much. Our bus is a little worried. The three of us will be arrested and sent to Poland. Oh, that stopped. No, that stopped in the 40s. Yeah, all right. Okay, cheers. Thanks for coming. We'll hear more from you. What's the next book? Very quickly. Uh, it's uh, just a book about uh, the different cities and how we don't know their history properly. But it'll be the same style? It'll be the same style. Yeah. Fun to see. AMAs in a minute. Hey everybody, welcome to another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please make sure you do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Also want to remind you, please do fill out our listener survey. This is a really, really important thing for us right now. You can go to IVMPodcast.com slash survey. We ask you a few questions about who you are, what kind of podcast you like listening to, you know, uh, what do you think of things going on so far? So please do fill that out. It would help us. Also would like to thank our sponsors on the network this week. We have Intel, Cambly, and Storytel. On Pesa Vesa, Anupam is joined by Anup Vijay Kumar, a SEBI registered investment advisor. He talks about the Warren Buffet investing strategy and stock markets. 
On the scene in the unseen, Amit is joined by author and columnist Sujata Anandan. She talks about the ups and downs of Maharashtra politics over the last five decades. On Advertising is Dead, Varun is joined by business head of Gully Gang Entertainment, Chaitanya Kataria. They discuss the rise of new age music. On Lit Nama, Lakshmi is in conversation with poet Jasmine Kurana. They discuss the trend of slam poetry. On Geek Fruit, Chishnu is joined by Siddhant Mehta and they do a roundup of the greatest hits and myths of 2019. On Simplified, Chuck and Shriket simplify the impeachment process in the US and discuss the chances of Trump getting impeached. It's a crossover episode on the Empowering series. As Zarina is joined by Utsa Memoria, host of Postcards from Nowhere. They talk about slow traveling, places to visit in India and abroad, and how to travel on a tight budget. On Postcards from Nowhere, Utsa tells you how to travel safely to offbeat places with controversial histories and politics. And with that, let's get you on with your show. If you have any questions for Cyrus, write to us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Or you can send an email to says at gmail.com. All right, back here on the AMAs. Back here. We never went anywhere. It just sounds like we're a big show. Back here. <laughs> uh, Daksh is with us, a new voice. Uh, presumably a free voice Let's see how long that lasts We joke about this a lot But free speech and all that As an artist, as a writer I mean, that's the fundamental thing And, and it's dying a little bit It's dying and, and the fact of the matter Is that you have to first address that Before you find another voice yeah, And talk true. about something else in your life And that's a bit scary That if you can't go over that How do you go anywhere else? Because you're stuck in this You know, this thing Which is over you like a cloud yeah, And true. you're just trying to burst through uh, True. I'm, I'm doing too much acting, Abbas. That's okay. Please cut in any time you want to. <laughs> Abbas joins us. He's the anchor, comedian. Yeah, He's got I, his own voice. Yes. And also a liberal. We're the last three, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so let's off we go. <laughs> All right. The first one comes from Bharat Rajmani. Uh, he says, "Hi Cyrus, what's your take on the number of Indians who've reached position, top positions like CEO, CFO, CTO, etc. in MNC in the USA?" is higher than the number of Chinese counterparts, even though the Chinese are higher in terms of number of people taking higher yeah, education. Yeah, I think, A, this. that's got to do with language. Indians who uh, go abroad and do well, mostly educated in English. Mm. And actually, English is their first language, no matter what they say about, you know, Punjabi and uh, Tamilian or whatever. They, but they think in English. I believe in the language you think in is the language you do best at, yeah. even though yeah. you speak a mother tongue really well or whatever. Yeah. So, that that's a huge advantage. When I was in the States and maybe when he was in Australia, you, you, they don't expect you sometimes because you're brown skin or whatever to speak so well. Uh-huh. But I'm sure you spoke better English than many Australians. Yeah. It's quite embarrassing. I hope, yeah. After some time, you know, when you have to explain to them, no, deluxe is spelled with an yeah. E. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, I think that's one issue. Second thing is Indians, at least my generation, 90s and 2000s that I've seen, the ones that went abroad and did well and stayed back mm-hmm. were all overachievers. You know, mm-hmm. because I think it's just it, you have to stand on your own two feet and you sort of like really explode there. Uh, mm-hmm. In many ways, it's very good if you, I think you must have experienced that in Melbourne and Sydney. When you actually get out of the comfort zone, you really mm-hmm. find yourself. And success is not just money. You know what I mean? Yeah, this yeah. is success. That's writing a book, finding yeah. your voice, all that. Right. So, but do you think that's changed, this idea of the brown person No, because then we, speaking. after 2007, when the recession happened, a lot of Indians started coming back. Mm-hmm. And we have started uh, building up India. To some extent, that's true, as the place where you can earn your money and whatever. So, there's yeah, a true. bit of a uh, trend to come back. Mm-hmm. But the generation that went there was my generation and the one before that. They've all done really well. And if you didn't yeah. do very well... You, you know, uh, well, that's really, people have died because of that, because there's, there's no reason to explain. Right. I mean, it was like one out of 50 Indians who didn't do well, yeah. who had Ivy League educations or fancy educations mm-hmm. and stuff. Quite embarrassing. Yeah. So the language you think is one of the primary I think against so. China when you go, yeah. the reason we can defeat them in battle in an English-speaking country is because mm-hmm. our skills will always be better in language. Okay. And also, I think culturally, um, we tend to uh, ingratiate ourselves better than the sub- other subcontinental right. people or South Asian people because we, we've we grown up in a very Western... See, all Indians, what we don't understand is all Indians from upmarket segment have a strong Westernized setting whether they like it or not. So we okay. understand the West quite well. Mm. And we can, you know, we understand the way of working and all. But yeah. of course, when we come back, we don't. That environment is not that different. No, it's not. Yeah. Okay. yeah. They just have better sunglasses. <laughs> and there's parking in some of the big cities. No sun. I couldn't no. believe that. <laughs> I just, when I go to city and I find parking, I just, I kneel. For me, it's like you're seeing a shrine or something. I, I kneel, I cry. I say, look at this. And I remember when I was in the States first, and I, I went to my sister's in North Carolina, and I saw a, a mall and the parking outside, the size for parking per car, I could put three Indian cars in. Mm-hmm. Each yeah. parking It was just I couldn't believe it I, I touched it I, 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 You know I took the soil And put it on my face <laughs> I was like This is where I want to be This parking lot 
maybe that's where I'll end up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next question is uh, road related. Uh, this comes from Nikki. She's writing in from Washington DC. She says I study here and the most important rule in the USA is not to honk until and unless you see an ambulance. So I couldn't honk to slow drivers to say fuck you from the road. Also most of the population who live in Washington here consists of people who are above the age of 50. They are retired politicians who think the road and the country like belongs Delhi. belongs to them. So she's asking how do I take out my road rage but if I can't. But that's why abuse honk? was invented. I always uh, my kids tell me don't abuse don't abuse but I think if I abuse a little bit but not to the person but just get out of my system it for me, me, because driving is very i don't know if you guys drive but driving is a very irritating thing after some yeah. time because you do realize that people are not civic yeah true or maybe maybe you think you're more civic i don't know who can tell the truth the perspective is all over the place but the point is nobody is ever looking and think okay if i take the car left i can let other people go because i'm not in a hurry nobody ever thinks like that yeah. so after 10 times of that happening you start losing it so i like to vent so but, I, but have you driven in other countries and is it i same? have i've driven in switzerland and there are no cars for hours Exactly. So you can honk as much as you want because there's nobody there to tell you. But I did. I remember once my wife was uh, driving and uh, she suddenly had a brake, so she just hit the horn because we're Indians, and yeah. that happened simultaneously when we hit the brake. <laughs> and uh, the guy behind, the look he gave us. I mean, it was like it was worse than racism. It was like, how dumb are you, brown man? Mm. And I was like, I'm not even driving. It's her. But maybe he thought she was the brown man. I can't tell because I was shot. But you know, all said and done, um, yeah, you 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 know that, right? In in Western cultures, this honking thing and all, yeah, yeah. very rare. You know, not a biggie. Not a yeah, biggie. yeah, you got to let out some abuses. That's mm. that's. Have you it. driven in Australia? Yeah, all the What's time. What's it like there? Uh, it's now getting um, There's a lot of traffic now So I suppose Sydney yeah. would be one thing But when you go from uh, city oh, to city Open Open and open there'll be roads. no honking Nothing right Yeah, yeah. Nothing. Uh, the cities are the same The cities will always be A bit of a problem Yeah yeah. But the one thing I have noticed In Western society They will allow the pedestrian to cross Oh mm-hmm. that's very true You, yeah. The pedestrian is king now we don't have that Our pedestrians It's a lottery You see it in their eyes <laughs> Will I make it Then he calls the mother And says bye The budget plays in the background And then he You know the, that You have the charge of fire theme yeah. As he goes across And then whatever happens Happens And then a lambretta Going slowly kills him Because he didn't see it Coming out from the right Of your car But say la vie As the Indians say yeah. Chariots of fire And lambretta Yeah there you go The my, scenes My references It took place my in the 80s yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly <laughs> And that's where The fan base is now <laughs> My fan base is like Washington 50 plus <laughs> <laughs> Alright, the last one comes from Web of Jen. Hi, Cyrus. You've mentioned you love uh, Korean crime movies. Have you seen Memories of Murder? I mean, it's a it. must-see Korean crime. Yeah, what I've noticed about Korean, movie. oh, you've seen it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great. Yeah, amazing movie. So I'm now stuck in this after Narcos, uh, the actual one. Yeah. I just started going to. Well, you know how the algorithm plays and yeah, they start yeah. showing the same yeah, stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. So first, they, I think it's a Lakshman Rekha sort of Seema Rekha thing where you have to cross it, you have to cross the line, right? And say I can t- see a foreign film dubbed or whatever. Mm. But that is a bit yeah, of a problem. Yeah. Once you cross that line, the world is your oyster; yeah. it never ends. Mm. And I really like the the Korean uh, style. Is really aggressive <laughs> gangster movie. Mm. I mean, they, they yeah. don't. There's no second wasted. Mm-hmm. So if you want a blood rush sort of thing, they really. Yeah. Uh, what is language end of the day? Once you start understanding what's going on, do I really care? Right. You know, blood still red. Yeah, it's yeah. that. Yeah, I think there's a lot of angst also deep down, and the you know good guy bad guy makes you feel better at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah because Especially you can't, if you've you can't been win in your life. For an hour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you can't win in your own life. Yeah. No? <laughs> so this but you didn't real. like gangs of Asipur. I, I saw uh, the first part The first thing It was yeah. very slow The beginning okay. hmm. And uh, I felt they were all Putting on these accents Okay Because uh, you know The whole thing is uh, you But know, that's authenticity right I don't know how authentic it was You, you tell me Pretty you know. authentic You think Yeah But it works for me When I see a Sicilian mafia film And everybody's talking like that You know I'm okay with it You know Because <laughs> it's got a certain But at Vasipur It didn't work for me you know? Maybe I'm, <laughs> I'm like a racist You know I want Sicilian <laughs> Yeah Okay. But but I like a lot of uh, I, I, there there been other gangster films that I like I like the Sarkar films hmm. uh, never say that in public but I did <laughs> <laughs> so there have been the one I liked and um, Nayakan which is the uh, uh, I don't know if you guys Nayakan, seen Kamal yeah. Nayakan which is a nineties or eighties yeah, 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 film 80s, yeah. oh, amazing movie. amazing movie yeah. superb hmm. so it's not yeah. like so now I'm, I'm open I'm open but I got to get out of this gangster thing man <laughs> what do I watch romantic comedies my wife likes to watch furniture. <laughs> The shows on furniture. What culture do we live in where people upload stuff on furniture? They tell you about what a castle door looked like 400 years ago and how it's exactly the same. And then they show it to you. Oh, It's called comfort TV. It makes you feel good. Yeah. Oh, but really? My, my, my wife's <laughs> a thing? Yeah, 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 it is. My wife's an art lover. So I've been through exhibitions. And if you don't really understand art, you know, it's not easy. 
Because some of them are really long. <laughs> you know, like 800 paintings and all you're thinking about... So you have to do like a match thing. One, two, three, four. Have you stay. seen the Mary Kondo show? Uh, she tells you how to yeah. clean up, clean up oh, the God. clutter in I've your house. I've seen that. And that Kuna likes that, oh, by I the way. I saw the ad for that. Yeah. Yeah. I was, who, who's watching this? It's, it's highly it's rated. A, yeah, really? it's a, it's and a men also. It's, it's, and it's not homosexual men or something. There's no stereotype to it. People like all this. Yeah, yeah, Wow, yeah. okay. Well, I had a kid six months ago, so I haven't watched anything. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Yeah. You're still feeding, right? Yeah. And yeah. the kid? Like, <laughs> even if I clean up the clutter, Both the clutter will be back. Ooh, this poor guy's life just going downhill, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's plug the book one last time. Nation of Idiots. Dutch, of course. Unique voice. Let's hope people listen to it. And I think we need more critics, man. I think the, the world needs more critics. People say, why, why are you a critic? I think without, without criticism, there's no fun. Yeah, true. It'll be so boring. Imagine a nation of idiots. Where everybody's like, hello, pleased to meet you. Hello. God. You just mask change. the problems, yeah. Yeah. Or pretend they aren't, exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, Abbas, are you going to come out with a book? One day, maybe, yes. But stay in Sydney, yeah? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Send in your topics for our year ender. 31st December is the year ender, or maybe 32nd, I haven't checked. And uh, whatever topics you want, we'll put on cock and bull so we can answer your questions directly. Everything from taxation to taxis. All this and more, we will answer. So send in as quickly as you can. I leave you with my signature. Follow me at Instagram and Twitter on Bored Brocha. I'm so bored, I need your help. I need your love. I need your touch. Okay, just just, just follow me. Okay, catch us on any of the podcasting apps, please. We beg you, we need you. Send us your questions on Twitter, on Cyrus Says In. Or you can email us, even if you're not female, on whatcyrussays at gmail.com. And that's what Cyrus Says. रिश्ते में तो हम तुम्हारे पॉडकास्ट लगते हैं नाम है फुटबॉल शुड बॉल प्रेजेंटिंग फुटबॉल शुड बॉल अ शो अबाउट थ्री फ्रेंड्स डिस्कसिंग आर फेवरेट गेम ओवर अ बियर समटाइम्स थ्री मे बी इवन फाइव हाई एम शिवा एंड विद मी आर माई टू साइड किक्स गौरव सापरे एंड कार्तिक अयर साइड किक यू मीन लाइक बैटमैन रॉबिन a van percy robin no i mean like alexis sanchez but with a little more skill than just playing the piano ha just shows how the best players at arsenal are mere bench warmers at united but oh, thank you ayer but you're a fulham supporter so whenever you say anything to support me i question my beliefs just like how griezmann would say ek bar maine jo decision le liya to main apne aap ki bhi nahi sunta banter aside we will talk match reports transfer rumors top controversies fantasy football picks and so much more so grab a beer and tune in to football should ball every wednesday on the ivm podcast app website or wherever you get your podcasts hi guys this is ayushi and i am ritasha and welcome to agla station adulthood It's a fun podcast we've got going on and we'd love for you to tune in and enjoy with us. Join us as we stop at various stations and discuss different topics that seem to be bothering us and hopefully Dating, you as well. Dating, relationships, beauty, just being an adult, lots of different things. We don't have a great grip on it, but we've done okay so far. Catch Agla Station Adulthood every Thursday on the IVM app, the IVM website or wherever else you get your podcasts.